All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for subscribing and liking the videos. We truly appreciate your support. We're back at it with another video and we're on FSD beta 10.69.2.3. However, in the last video, as it didn't perform so well in our, our first impressions, I did mention that I was gonna do a reference drive. As I sit there and talk about and critique how FSD beta is driving, there really is no frame of reference of how it should be driving. So I'm actually gonna drive manually to show you how I think FSD beta should be driving our particular paths where it should stay on the line, what decisions it should make, et cetera. Just to use as a frame of reference. So as we go forward from this point, you'll be able to see how I drive or how I think it should drive versus how it drives. So let's just get started right now. Morning time, same conditions, same morning traffic, a little bit more sun glare than typical, but that's okay for me. But we're off to the races now. We're off to the races. We're gonna go our, our first turn here. Turn signal up. School bus coming on the left. I can see past this car that's next to me and I'm gonna go. Take it off. This is the angle that I wanna take off at. I don't wanna get too close to this line. FSD beta typically does. Too close to that line right there. Nice and center in the lane as you can see in the visuals to keep me honest. Nice and center in the lane. Maybe a little bit too hot, I'll come down to 30 just to be at parity with what I set FSD beta for. And I'm gonna make our first turn. I'm not gonna encroach on the bike lane slash shoulder. I'm gonna keep it nice and tight because this is a sharp turn. I don't wanna run the risk of hitting the rim. So I'm gonna take it full speed. 13 miles an hour is a good mile an hour. Nice, good angle. And I'm gonna take this turn Obviously, it, it dings because it thinks this car is in our path. Take this turn nice and wide. See the repeater camera. See how wide I am here. I'm not too close to it. Imagine this line that you see here, the center line of the road. That's kind of what it is anyway. Even though the lane markings are invisible, as you see FSD visuals trying to blip it and, and extrapolate what it is. Coming here, slowing down a little bit. Taking this one right on the line. Closer and biasing towards the center line than the shoulder and the curb. Not too close, giving us room to make evasive maneuvers as needed. And we're coming up on our unprotected left turn. Pedestrian here, slowing down before the limit line. Then I'll creep up to the limit line. Start to look left and right. Put my turn signal on, of course. Now creeping up a little bit more. I see an opening, I'm gonna take it. Right here. Nice and smooth, right back. No herky-jerky, no hesitation. I saw an opening, I committed to it, and I went, and now I'm centering the line. Again, a little bit too hot. I'll come back down to 30. But this is how FSD beta should be driving, and this is the expectations that I'm holding it against when I make my critiques and criticisms about how it should be doing. And on certain builds, as you notice in the past, all the way back to 10.6, Right, 10.6, we're at 10.13 or 14 technically, but we're Elon sticking with the .69. Um, we saw the good behaviors, especially on that first right where it took the good mile an hour. You know, if you're driving 25 miles an hour when you're making a turn like that, it should be no less than, you know, uh, 13, maybe even 14 miles an hour to make that turn to make it smooth and comfortable. Any slower starts to impede the progress of the cars behind you if they're turning or not. I'll slow down come to a stop for this one and I'll wait. So as I'm driving, I started to think about um, what if there was a learning mode? What if there was a mode that you could learn and teach FSD beta how you prefer to drive a specific path or a specific route? This is a preference to how you would want the car to drive. That'd be kind of cool. So it has, it has this core set of data which is based on driving rules, defensive driving rules, and that's its core set of, of profile, if you will, for how it drives. And then you can have a custom profile, which adds on to that the way that each individual driver drives and their preferences, the speed preferences, how they take turns, et cetera. That would be pretty cool. That's probably pretty advanced, pretty far off, but I think that's really what we we need to have in the future to really make everyone comfortable with how FSD beta drives. 
And then you could say, hey, I'm putting it on my spouse's profile. It's going to drive like my spouse so I can feel comfortable or drive like me or drive like my brother or my cousin or whatever the case may be. Thought that'd be pretty cool. Something to consider Elon and team. Signaling just to get into this lane, but I'm going to turn it off because I'm going straight. And now I'm in this wide lane, controversial lane. People talk about how do you drive this lane? It's a single lane. Only when you get to the light, it sort of deviates and you create your own path, whether you want to go straight or left. I'm going to stick to this side because this, this, uh, these people here typically turn right. They typically turn right. Sometimes people turn left if they have their signal on, but typically they turn right. And if I need to overtake someone to get into the next lane, I can do so better in this one. See that? This truck still has space to compete until the, 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 the lane funnels into this tighter lane here. There's a the truck. There he is. He's still there. And that was a safer way to do it versus the car trying to race from the right side of the lane to get there. Again, this is all one lane. That's why the cars are parked there. If cars were parked on that overpass area, uh, it would be the same scenario. One lane going this way. And then the deviation is when you get to the light, who's going left, who's going right, etc. On the opposite direction, and we'll show that in a bit, um, there are demarcations for left turns versus going straight and right. That's missing there, but it's the same behavior and same concept. Hopefully we don't get caught in, there's a car trying to turn. Hopefully we don't get caught with the train actually coming down, that would be horrible. Emergency vehicles are coming from behind, but they're going straight, no impact to us. And now we cross the train track. And if I am seeing I'm gonna get stopped here, this is wide enough for me to make maneuvers. That's why this lane is wide like this, because if I need to make a maneuver and get off the train track, I can do so. But I'm actually gonna make this right, so I'm getting in the right lane. FSD Beta does a pretty good job getting in the right lane right here and making the turn. Now, see the distance that I am from the curb and look at the actual turning curb here. Um, I don't need to go terribly wide to make that turn. I can stay the course right here and make the turn this way. Look at that, see that? And it's a nice smooth turn. FSD beta tends to go wide and then cut the turn hard and accelerate out. All right, again, staying close to the center line so I don't have to make adjustments. Let's go on the second path. I'll make this turn here, which is typically when I would disengage and continue our trip. Continue trip. And now I'm going to keep going. I'll speed up just a little bit just to make the video go a little faster. But again, this is the, the precedent that I'm trying to set and the frame of reference I'm trying to set for FSD beta and how it should drive. Turn signal on, always stop. Yielding the right of way. No one person has the right of way. I'll let this pedestrian, they have definitely have the right of way, but no cars have the right of way. We negotiated. He's going to go straight. I'm going to go together. Let's do it. Okay. Over the train tracks, no signals, no warnings, going straight through. FSD beta does a good job of doing that. And then we get to this left turn here. Signaling, getting in the lane. A nice smooth turn because it's nice and clear. But I'm going to keep it tight. See this? I'm going tight here. I'm not going to go wide like it typically does. I'm going tight there. And when you come to that turning lane, whatever it is, you always want to keep your wheel or yoke, your wheels of your car effectively and your steering wheel straight on a turning lane. You don't want to have your wheels turned in a given direction, left or right, because if someone was to hit you from the back, you could be pushed into oncoming traffic potentially if you have it turn left going to get over early this time because I know the road, I know the traffic pattern, I can see the other cars as context clues, but you don't want to do that. See, if, if even the pl planner wants me to go around these cars, just having the planner on, it wants me to go around. It doesn't really know what to do. Now it's consistent with me going right in this lane right here. And that's where the fix needs to happen. Turn my signal off because I'm going straight and then proceed straight through. But yeah, on the turning lane, any type of turning staging lane, you don't want to have your wheel turned from a defensive driving standpoint, because if someone was to hit you, you could be coming, pushed onto oncoming traffic. So you wanna actually keep your wheel straight and keep your signal on to indicate where you're gonna turn. Nice smooth turn here, good mile an hour, not going below, you know, 
uh, 13, 12 miles an hour. That becomes uncomfortable. Complete stop. I'm gonna go. This person seems eager on the right, but I'm already out there and I'm gone. I try to make sure that I'm not too close to these cars, if at all possible, so that my ultrasonic sensors, which are going away, we'll talk about that in another video, um, are not in the red. They're more in the yellow, orange territory, but they're not in the red. Red means they're really close. Uh, and I believe it starts, the red starts at about 10 to eight inches away. So that's not good. So see, a little bit of red on that last one because it was unavoidable, pretty wide car. I'm gonna go now. This person wanted to go, but I'm gonna go. Now, here's the interesting part that I always talk about. Suburban roads where cars are parked on a wide lane like this, where there's no demarcation for the shoulder. Keep me straight. This is how I want to drive. That way, if there's any other cars, I'm just staying the course. I don't have to do any additional calculations or computations of how I need to maneuver around them. The beta tends to weave in and out. Is the car there? I'll weave around it. That's not the behavior it should be doing in suburban areas, in any area where you have a lane like this, no demarcation for the shoulder, and cars that are parked on the side. If you see cars parked on the side, one or more, it should automatically default to the behavior of, hey, I'm gonna hug this center line. Not too close to be dangerous, still giving yourself a buffer and some room, as you see here, to make maneuvers should someone jump over the line, but staying the course. See this? I don't have to make a maneuver. I can just stay the course, and that car just passes right by me. I don't have to weave back and forth. I'm gonna slow down a little bit just so I can give some better spacing behind this car so you guys can see ahead of us. See that? Cars are all here. I know this car is there, I know that car is there. Let me stay straight. Let me stay straight. Look at the line, the path planner still wants to weave in and out. We don't need to do that, just stay straight. Okay, you may wanna weave a little bit. Let's slow down for this pedestrian. Look at this, let this pedestrian go. And resume. Car coming up. I don't need to wait to the last minute to make this adjustment. I'm gonna make it now in anticipation, proactive as opposed to reactive and get over. And now my path is planned well in advance. Okay, these two cars went. I'm gonna let this gentleman go. I'm gonna wave him through and let him go. And then this car is gonna go now too, of course. I'll let them go and then I'll go. Not atypical for FSD beta, but that was just the human part of it, just letting other humans go. All right, sweeping corner. I know the corner sweeping, I can't see it. Let me slow down a little bit here, just a little bit so I can make the turn nice and easy. I don't know what's coming up. I can't see, the sun is out, whatever the case may be. I miss the pothole and then I get back in and I resume my lane. Staying center. Now I see a median coming up. I'm not gonna slow down terribly for this, but maybe the rules say that you slow down. Okay, cool, I'll slow down a little bit for this. Cyclists are in the park. I'm gonna go through this park. And I'm gonna follow the rules to pass them accordingly. Share the road, so we'll take our time. This is gonna slow the video down up, I apologize. Maybe we can speed it up in a minute. Uh, I just wanna try to get past these guys so I can show you how it should be taking these sweeping turns in this, in this park, which it does a really good job of being safe and cautious on but not such a great job, um, you know, in terms of pace. Right, I'm gonna go around these guys, it's all clear. So probably starting here is when I'll replicate what the beta should be doing. Okay, slowing down and the yoke needs to be at a set angle, a smoother angle. Pedestrian, slow down a little bit here. This is what the beta should be doing, taking its time, very good. Getting back in the lane and re-engaging. It doesn't need to move as if the, the lines are not a smooth curve, but instead a combination of jagged angles. That's kind of how it moves. If you think about how things are built in 3D, polygons, things like that, instead of being a, poly, a polygon type of shape, where it's just a bunch of angles that make up a curve, make it a smooth curve so that it turns like this and not like this. It shouldn't do this. It should be nice and smooth. And when I give the compliments to FSD beta, that's what I'm seeing is a nice, smooth, committed turn of the yoke so that it feels comfortable 
and I feel comfortable. Slow down for the pedestrian, make the evasive maneuver around them briefly, and pass when it's safe, staying centered. But really wish there was a learn mode. I wish you could say, hey, learn, learn this path, FSD beta. Let me teach you, drive like this. And it can replicate what you do. That'd be awesome. Slowing down for the turn, because I can't see past it. Taking it nice and smooth. Car over the line, evasive, nice and slow. And just everything smooth. Like this is the ideal state of FSD beta if it can drive at this level of comfort. This level of comfort for anybody in the car with me will probably be uh, a 10, nine or a 10, depending on you know <laughs> how they feel being driven versus driving. Here's the area that always goes to the right. Doesn't need to go to the right. This is the lane, this is the path. Those are parked cars, stay away from the parked cars. Then I can readjust the center. I'll slow down here because that person didn't slow down, probably blinded from the sun. And let me maneuver here. This is not, this is a bonus. This is the bonus area where it messed up before. This is not typically where you would be driving. And you just turn in here. See that? Slow down for this car coming in. And we proceed. Nice, slow, 15 miles an hour. Taking the turn at 10 miles an hour, 11, because we're in close quarters, tight quarters in a park. No big deal. All right. Nice and slow, nice and easy. Staying away from the parked cars on the left, staying as center as possible, closer to this way because there are parked cars and we want to proceed with caution. Anyone can jump out of those cars. Any of those cars could move without seeing. All right, so that's the abundance of caution that I'm expecting from FSD beta. All right, so that's it. That's, that's the drive. Those are the paths that we take. Those are the expectations that we have on FSD beta. So this is the, the basis for which the criticism that we give uh, is being warranted uh, because we want FSD beta to drive as natural as human-like, but also following the rules. It should have a core guide, a set of rules that are not just reactive to the environment with visuals, but are rooted in the basis of driving. The driving courses, driving instructions, the driving rule book, defensive driving, it should have all that data inside of it effectively and using that to govern its decision and its behavior. And then the reactive component of it to what it sees, what the road conditions are, et cetera. So follow the rules and then know when to deviate from those rules. And I profess that we should probably let the driver in its infancy give consent, just the way that stoplight and stop sign control work, where you sort of had to give consent for it to go through a stop sign. Now, obviously stop signs and lights are so abundant, it became annoying, but it was a good baby step, a good first step. So maybe there's a scenario where it prompts you to break the rules. Should I pass this car? Should I go over the, the yellow line? Should I go over the dotted line? Should I make this turn? Whatever the case may be, and give the driver some culpability and responsibility to acknowledge, yes, you should, you should do that. Yes, you should proceed. And then it can learn over time if that's a safe maneuver to do based on those decisions. So that's the way I think it should work. Uh, obviously, you know, there's people way smarter than me on the FSD beta team, the AI team uh, that know what they're doing, but there's just some suggestions. Maybe that's in the plan. Maybe that is the plan now. Maybe that always was the plan. And maybe that's how it works. I and mean, we were just not seeing it, but would love to see those, those changes, those adjustments surface to the forefront so that we can actually see them in the actual car see them in the way that the car maneuvers and moves and drives everywhere, West Coast, East Coast, whatever. But if it drives like this, like I just showed you, anywhere in the, wor in the world, we should be good. Uh, we should be good. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know if this was helpful to be able to see a frame of reference, what I'm talking about for our, our test paths, to see how I'm driving or how I expect FSD beta to drive versus how the car drives itself. Let me know in the comments. And until the next time, enjoy your day and enjoy your Tesla.